In this chapter we meet a new class of compounds called alkenes. The E and E at the end of the word alkene means that this class of compounds has double bonds between two of its carbons. Up until now we've seen A and E as a suffix. Alkanes with the A and E, that means that all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. But uh, it's very common to encounter double bonds as well. In the last chapter we saw substitution reactions where some atoms were coming into a molecule and other atoms were leaving. In an elimination reaction, you only remove atoms. And it's the removal of atoms that brings about the creation of those double bonds. The picture here of the bananas is because the simplest alkene, the first one on this next slide, is found in bananas. And ethene here is a hormone for bananas. It brings about the ripening. And so when bananas are transported, they are sometimes transported in a way to delay that ripening in which the ethene they create is allowed to uh, get away from the bananas. In other instances, ethene can be added to bananas, sprayed onto them, in fact, to bring about the ripening process. Um, these alkenes have a lot of properties that are similar to their alkane cousins, but they can also undergo some interesting reactions because of that double bond. That's what chapter 6 is about. For right now, we want to get used to their structures, the naming system that goes along with that, uh, and talk about some of these elimination reactions that can create them. So our naming system on the far left here does a lot of what it has already done. Uh, it allows us to tell how many carbons are in a molecule, but that E-N-E -E suffix means there's a double bond. That means starting with four carbons, we have to have a number in front of the name to tell us where the double bond starts. In one butene, the double bond starts at carbon one. In one pentene, it starts at carbon one. But these last two alkenes can have isomers in which the double bond is located elsewhere. So there's, for example, a two butene or a two pentene. These structures in the middle reflect the fact that if you make models of these, you do find that there is a trigonal planar geometry around these carbons. They're only connected to three other atoms even though they're still making the four bonds. So our four bond rule will still be in place, but now uh, two of those four bonds will oftentimes be a double bond. And if you build models of alkenes, you can confirm that all of the atoms surrounding that double bond are going to be in the same plane. As we do with alkanes, though, we don't always show that complete geometry. These condensed structural formulas I do have to show if there's a double bond there, but otherwise they can be drawn much the same way we've drawn alkanes. What these structures point out are some uh, rules for naming that we are going to have to appreciate. As I mentioned on the last slide, we can have double bonds that don't always start at the beginning of a chain, so that's why this first one's 2-hexene. The double bond starts at carbon 2 and goes to carbon 3. And the one below it, we have to locate the chlorine here as well as locate the double bond and the double bond as it says outranks that chlorine and so we still have to make decisions about which way to number a chain double bonds outrank the location of methyl groups, ethyl groups, any halogen group. In this third one what we see is that when we select our parent chain it has to include as many carbons as possible, but if there's a double bond, it has to be a part of that parent chain. And we want to number the chain to put that double bond with a low number. So notice the way this third one's numbered here. It's a hexene, six carbons with a double bond at the end. In this last one, we start numbering in our ring so that if there is a double bond in the ring, that will involve the number one and the number two carbon. So numbering it in the way it does allows us to put the bromine at the number three position. And it's understood that if this is a cyclohexene, that the double bond involves carbons one and, and two.